Well, good afternoon. This is Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. This is a quick update uh, to address the potential of tropical storm development over the next uh, seven to 10 days. There's been a lot of uh, chatter uh, online and on social media uh, about a major storm system uh, that's going to hit the Gulf Coast region. And so I just wanted to uh, clarify uh, what you might be hearing or what you might be thinking, uh, because while we do have a chance of tropical storm or tropical cyclone development over the next seven to 10 days, uh, nothing is confirmed and nothing is certain. So I did just want to show you a couple of things briefly. You can see on GeoCollaborate here, what we monitor is the National Hurricane Center's uh, outlook, uh, their outlook for tropical activity over the next uh, seven days. And when you see areas outlined, uh, like here in the Atlantic Ocean that are yellow, typically that is a less than 20% chance uh, of development of any tropical system. And you can click on that. And uh, if it comes up blank here, you can hit the little arrow to go forward. And then you'll see here, it's uh, uh, over the next two days, a 10% chance. And over the next seven days, a 20% chance. So that's why you see these outlined in yellow. So uh, it bears monitoring, but no immediate uh, threat for tropical cyclone activity. When the uh, probability goes above 30%, uh, the color changes to an orange color. And that's what the, uh, this is the area that uh, we're monitoring, the National Hurricane Center is monitoring for potential uh, tropical disturbance uh, development over the next seven days. And uh, uh, that's why when you click on this in GeoCollaborate, you can see that it's a probability of two day development, 0%. Uh, and then the probability of development in the next seven days, 40%. That's a medium probability. Now, why does the National Hurricane Center uh, make it this color and have a higher probability? Well, it's because we look at numerical weather prediction models, a lot of them. And so what I'm going to do is just show you one, which is the operational model for the National Weather Service, uh, because it goes out a long period of time. And I'm going to show you what it is forecasting. We typically don't show the model output for our SICE uh, updates, but I do just want to bring a little bit more awareness uh, to why you might be hearing these things about a storm in the Gulf of Mexico over the next uh, week or so. So I'm going to bring on here a model forecast. And you can see what it looks like. Uh, it's not incredibly pretty. It has a lot of green on it. Uh, that is model output for precipitation. But I do want to point out a couple of things here. You can see right up here is the model initialization time. Right up here, it says 06Z, uh, September 19th. So that is a model that ran this morning about 2 a.m. Eastern time. And uh, the forecast is out, uh, goes out a long time. So this forecast period is valid uh, at 126 hours. That's already 12Z. That's about 8 o'clock Tuesday morning next week. And what we're looking at is this area of low pressure that the models are, are, uh, have, the, have had their eye on for a number of model runs. That's one of the things that we look for when a model forecasts a particular storm. It's model consistency. In other words, is it taking the initial conditions of the model that makes it run, and is it developing uh, some sort of cyclone or storm? And if it does that model run after model run after model run, uh, then we pay closer attention to it uh, to see what it looks like in the forecast. So I'm going to take this ahead uh, just uh, one clip at a time. This is during the day Tuesday, and you'll see that we get a little bit more definition to those isobars. That's those closed rings that you see. They're lines of equal pressure. And you can see that uh, really forming a low pressure over the Yucatan Peninsula. And this is the valid time of Thursday at zero Z. So that's late Wednesday night. Uh, and then the model continues to develop what looks to be now a tropical system. Uh, and it develop, de does develop it rather rapidly. Um, and this storm system seems to be a rather large one. 
uh, in its extent as opposed to a compact and small uh, type of tropical cyclone. Uh, but again, this is a model forecast and look at how far out it is. It is forecast hour 22Z. It is uh, how many hours out into the future? Uh, that is um, 222 hours. That is way far ahead. We typically call this fantasy land uh, because uh, we don't base any decision making on model forecasts that are out uh, this far. Um, the way that this model takes this storm, it continues to develop it, and then it heads uh, towards uh, somewhere in the Gulf Coast. Uh, this particular model is uh, between Louisiana and uh, the panhandle of Florida somewhere. But what I want to do is back this up uh, to a point, let's just say, uh, where it has a storm developing in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Um, and now what I can do is go back and look at previous model forecasts that are valid at the same time to see if we have consistency. So I'm going to go to the previous model run and look at where that model forecast had this storm at this time. You can see it's further north towards the center of the Gulf of Mexico. The time before that, back towards the central to western part of the Gulf of Mexico. The run before that, making landfall in northeast in the uh, Big Bend area of Florida. The run before that, along the Florida coastline, maybe inland. And the run before that, uh, you can see that uh, is off the coast of Florida. So, um, so what we're seeing here is not a great amount of consistency. Uh, with these model runs, and I'll continue to put these model runs, uh, take it back to the latest one, um, and I'll load the latest model run here. Uh, it looks like it's going to the current model run, which it doesn't have uh, that time frame completed yet uh, with the latest forecast. But what I want to point out, though, is that since we are seeing model consistency with something, developing in the Caribbean, Western Caribbean, and then on into the Gulf of Mexico, uh, the National Hurricane Center is putting this probability of something developing in this area at 40%. It doesn't mean it's going to happen. It just means we're gonna be focusing on that area over the next several days. And it doesn't even bring this storm into the Gulf of Mexico and threaten any part of the Gulf of Mexico coastline uh, until next weekend. Not this coming weekend, but next weekend. So I hope that's given you just a little opportunity to see how we work with uh, model data and how we work with uh, forecasting. That's just one model. There are many other models. Uh, we put models together for ensemble-based forecasts so we can have many model members and then take the average output of all of them to take a look and see what's going on. But since this is the operational uh, GFS model uh, from the US National Weather Service, and it's forecasting something happening uh, over the next uh, week, starting next Tuesday or Wednesday in the Caribbean and extending on past the weekend and then on into early the next week, uh, we're gonna be monitoring it too. And we'll certainly keep you posted through the Signal app and we'll keep you posted through the SICE hub. So thanks for watching. This has been a, a quick update. I hope it's been kind of quick, but most importantly, I hope it's uh, added some value uh, to how we use model data uh, when we forecast long term. So thanks for watching. I uh, hope you have a great weekend and we'll be back with the next update when conditions warrant uh, sometime next week, perhaps. Thanks so much for watching.